Is it recording? It's recording. Okay. Right. Welcome to Mr. Mac Paul's uh, great lesson on the 1873 Long Depression. All right. I'm going to have to move this camera slightly, slightly, slightly. There we go. Lovely. Okay. So today we're looking at the 1873 Long Depression. Now, in history, uh, in your GCC course, we have looked at the Great Depression and the Wall Street crash and how that was a cause of Hitler coming to power. Okay. What you're going to see here is actually how. Um, the Long Depression causes the scramble for Africa and is also a kind of causative agent of the culture of bellicosity as well. Okay, so I think this is quite interesting. Now, what is also interesting is a flow of, from war to eco aggressive economic um, policies and then to war again. So a long-term cause of the Long Depression is that we have two wars, and it's actually... This, what's interesting about this is it's kind of like a Great um, Depression before the Great Depression because it's truly international, right? It has international causes, causes and international consequences. And America, as an emergent power in the 1800s, is kind of central to this. And it has a very, very negative impact on the British Empire and, of course, on what happens in the Scramble for Africa. So very international. Now, one of the causes of a poor economy in Europe is the um, Franco-Prussian War. And this is in 1870, and it's a surprise because um, it's kind of the expectation was that France would win. But Prussia, you should know, was an early and dominant part of Germany. Okay, so when Germany's... Let me refine what I just said there. When Germany becomes united... Um, in 1870, after subsequent to this war, Prussia is kind of the leading nation of Germany, okay, or the leading part of Germany. I'm going to give you an example which you understand. If you think of Great Britain, we know that the dominant country in Great Britain is England, right? Like you've got smaller nations, you've got Scotland, you've got Wales, but the most dominant nation, uh, and of course Northern Ireland, but the country which dominates, like the United Kingdom, is England. Well, the country which dominated Germany was Prussia. And Prussia is very militaristic and aggressive. But anyway, that's a kind of little tangent there. So you've got this Franco-Prussian War, and this Franco-Prussian War <clears throat> um, kind of almost bankrupts France because France loses and they have to pay reparations. Okay, now you're, you're kind of used to that idea of reparations because after World War One, Germany had to pay ridiculous reparations, right? Okay, so the thing is about wars is that the outcomes are uncertain, they're risky, and then they cause a poor economy. Now, if France is bankrupt, it's not going to be able to trade with Britain very well. OK, or Germany or Holland. OK, so it upsets an economic circle. War is damaging to economy. All right. So you've got the Franco-Prussian War. And before this, in the United States, they had a civil war. OK, so you had the American Civil War, which I believe is 1861 to 1865. Yeah. Yes, Osman. Yeah. OK, Pru I've just explained what Prussia is. Prussia is a, was a main and significant leading part of Germany, which became the German state. Before that, it was an independent state by itself. Okay, and it's, it's German, Germanic and very militaristic. Okay, so you've got the American Civil War. Does anyone want to Google the dates of that? Just to make sure I'm correct. Okay, I believe it's 1861 to uh, 1865. Am I correct? Am I right? Am I right? I'm gonna do that. Come on, guys, work with me. Yeah, I'm right. Yeah, I always date my, date myself. I don't know. Right, anyway, thank you. So the American Civil War is extremely damaging to the um, American economy, especially now. Obviously, you would think, well, the American Civil War. You might have a, like a kind of grasp about what that was. Kind of, what was central to that was one, the right to secede of the Southern states, and of course the slave trade. Okay. So now, what was important about that slave trade? What, what did the slaves uh, kind of like? Was the main uh, economy they focused on, and you probably might know that was cotton. Okay, so that cotton was really important to uh, global trade. Okay, obviously it's used for, for textiles and clothing. Okay, all right. So it yeah, upset that trade there, and then it actually made Britain more dependent on Egyptian cotton. Okay, which is why Britain then becomes much more interested in um, e like Egypt economically. Do right, you see like there's loads and loads of consequences uh, to things that happen in history. Anyway, now this long depression. This sets the conditions for this. So it upsets not just the European economy, but the American economy. All right. So we've got some international elements of war happening simultaneously, which then have a kind of double negative impact on trade. So I'm going to explain something which is quite interesting here. So America refines its Coinages Act. Now, 
you used to have a silver standard, okay? You used to have a silver standard. And then you, you had a biometallic standard where silver and gold were priced in relation to one another and it became quite a complex system. And what you used to get in America was um, men going to silver mines, okay? They would mine their silver and then they would just turn their silver straight into silver dollars. Okay, so you whole, had a whole economy there. But what um, the American political leaders decided to do was move away from this biometallic, so two metal, like money standard, and move towards a gold standard, okay, for in, for international trade. So international trade uh, would improve because um, basically what you get is like leaders of Britain, America, Germany, like the most important economies in the world, they all get together and they think, well, if we just have a gold standard, this will enable global trade to improve. It doesn't really work out that way, all right? It doesn't really work out that way. So in America, this is really important because, look, it's the long, it's the long depression. It starts there. And in 1873, the USA passes its Coinages Act. And this is really controversial at the time. Okay? Coinage Act. And so they abandon no more biometallism. Right, so the biometallic standard is gone. Okay? And they're going to go to the gold standard. So what they thought would increase uh, trade, in fact, doesn't it? Okay? It becomes an absolute disaster. So... What you get is a run on the Bank of America, on the fourth bank of uh, fourth national bank, and in Vienna, which was part of Austria, which was a major European power at the time, their um, their stock market crashes. Okay, so there's some really significant um, consequences to this. Like if you ever see a run on the bank, so you've got a run on the fourth national bank of America. If you ever see a run on the bank, it's bad times. Okay. Do you actually, actually know what a run on the bank is? It's when everyone withdraws their money, okay? So banks can only exist because uh, <laughs> it's kind of like a weird economic house of cards. Okay, I'm not an economic expert, but what I can tell you is that banks rely on you not withdrawing your money out of them, okay? Banks rely on you thinking that your money is safe in there. Now, if everyone goes to the bank and they try to withdraw their savings, a bank can crash, Okay. So banks are the, the premise of their existence is based on consumer confidence, right? So you get around the bank, everyone wants to withdraw their money in America, and then so that happens in the USA. Now look what we keep on seeing: USA and Europe, USA and Europe. These two dynamics working together, and as I said, in Austria, we have a stock market crash. Okay, both in 1873 after this coinage act. All right. So what happens? Well, the American economy tumbles. And interestingly, interestingly, this starts to impact Great Britain tremendously. And then within this economic disruption and context, you can see that you get the scramble for Africa. You get um, the Britain um, being far more proactive in the Suez Canal and geopolitics, okay, to dominate the oil trade that goes through that region. So, and what if, if you look at this table here, which we can't see, but what, what you'll see is that industrial output begins to change, especially in the United Kingdom, because this long depression, it's called a long depression, because by different metric, by one metric, it only lasts like six years. By another metric, last 20 years in Britain, a long, this, the reason it's called a long depression, it has an enormously long impact, okay, on industrial output. So look at these statistics here. Yeah. Look at Britain's uh, industrial growth rate, okay, in these periods. Now, before 1873, it's deemed to be three, 1.7, two. We've got to slow down there, haven't we? Britain's industrial output is slowing down. Now, the United States goes from 6.2 to 4.7 to 5.3, okay? So it goes down, and then it picks up again. But look, between 1890 and 1913, look at the United Kingdom's growth rate. Below Germany, below the United States, even below France, below Italy, below Sweden, okay? Britain's industrial supremacy is now in question. To be a great power in the world, you have to be the great economic power. And Britain is starting to decline. This long depression has a huge impact on Britain's economy, okay, on its global power status. 
So it has a long term impact on Britain's industrial production, especially when measuring with our competitors and Britain's two main competitors at this time are the USA and Germany. Germany is very much an emergent power. And what's quite curious about this is that whilst the, the uh, production of iron doubles in Britain, the price halves. So we've got some really curious things going on with supply and demand, okay? Now, when Britain was the world dominant industrial power and producing everything, you wouldn't see um, a diminishment in, in the price of, uh, of, of iron there. But because you've got other countries competing, the world markets are being flooded with iron, okay? So it doesn't matter that we double our output, the price halves, okay? So British iron doubles. So for twice the amount of work, you're only getting like the, the same money, okay? Do you understand? So you can see how the British economy is coming. So British iron doubles, but the price halves. Because globally, other countries are beginning to mass produce iron on a similar scale. So you've got the, the laws of supply and demand, okay? Supply and demand. Now, what's interesting about this, because I might have bamboozled you with some economic information here. You might be thinking, well, why is this important? Okay? It's important because it completely changes. It completely changes geopolitics, okay? The, world, the way the world runs. So the consequence of the long impression, imperialism, the scramble for Africa, the Suez Canal purchase in 1875, Lord Carnarvon's ambitions in South Africa. Okay, you can see, like, you can see where this aggressiveness and bellicosity comes from, because with the British economy tumbling and becoming less impactful, then you might need to be more aggressive in getting resources across the world to offset that. Also, sorry, we've got writers writing this time, 1902. Okay, so who wrote imperialism? Hobson, thank you. So Hobson writes imperialism. He says that capitalism and imperialism go hand in hand. And what I've just shown you, what I've just kind of given you a mini lecture about today, can clearly demonstrates this. Okay, when capitalism isn't working very well, when your markets aren't very secure, imperialism can take care of that. You can offset that decline by being more imperialistic. Now, imagine if Britain didn't have imperial policies during this time, didn't go to South Africa and try and take the, you know, the Kimberley Diamonds and the transfer of gold, okay? Imagine if they weren't doing that. Imagine if they weren't following that aggressive policy, the economy would have plattered, like just would have completely diminished even further. So I think this is a fascinating, fascinating part of British history here, okay? Trade and commerce, the Long Depression, 1873, okay? It initiated, lasted until the 1890s. Okay, that is really is a long depression. All right, I'm going to end the video here and I'll upload it to YouTube. Okay, stop recording. Doink.